The Essential Education Projector Range from Hitachi sponsors ICT programs. In today's program, we look at free resources to help with Key Stage 2 numeracy, we showcase a storytelling session in a reception class, and we've got more top tips. Always make sure you check your bookmarks regularly. It'd be a shame to get caught out in a lesson and a website's no longer where you think it is. Hello and welcome to ICT SOS. Coming up on today's programme, maths and literacy. But first up, maths. Did you know that there are free resources available on the Primary National Strategy website? And have you thought about how to use them? Well, that was the problem facing Kylie Doherty. She wanted help improving the investigational skills of her Year 5 pupils. We sent along math specialist Darren Elson to help Kylie out. I know about the interactive teaching programmes because of the Primary National Strategy website and they were also on the whiteboards when we had them installed in schools. Um, what I'd really like some help with is um, integrating the ITPs into the children's maths lessons to improve their investigational skills. We've done that using pencil and paper but I think ICT could really improve that. So what would you like to get out of today then Kylie? Um, well although I'm familiar with using some of the ITPs myself in front of the class, it'd be really good if I could get the kids using them in the lessons. What are the kids like with their reasoning and communicating skills? Well, they're, they're good at talking to each other um, and working orally, but it, it, they find it quite difficult to record their methods and explain how they got to their answers sometimes. So if I could help you with presenting that evidence and gathering that evidence, because ICT is very good at that. Yeah. Well, what we could do is perhaps have a look at uh, getting the children exploring and testing a hypothesis today okay. based on diagonals of perhaps pentagons. Okay. Darren will use an interactive teaching program from the strategy to test the hypothesis that all pentagons have five diagonals. So what this uh, ITP basically does is if you change that number there, mm -hmm. it actually just changes the sides of the polygon. So actually set that to five and then click on the five, it creates a regular polygon. Right, okay. And then what we can do is manipulate that by pulling the fixed points. Okay. Okay. If we're actually doing this on pencil and paper, the children from imagination would probably only come up with a few pentagons, yeah, but that's right. this gives us lots more opportunities. And that's the beauty of using ICT in this way. So what I thought we could do is actually take the pentagons from here and put them into PowerPoint, and then the children could actually explore this hypothesis. Okay. okay. He begins by copying the Pentagon into a presentation package. He creates a new slide, and then by clicking Edit Paste, the polygon appears on the slide. Now he uses the line tools to draw the diagonals on the polygon. What we can then do is move the children on and say, so does this work for other shapes as well? Because it might be that the children start coming up with their own yeah. hypothesis and conjecture, and that's what we really want so in So it's like an open-ended investigation, really. They can take that's it right. as far as they And I'm sure some of them might go home and do this at home. Yeah. I mean, pair work's good as well because it promotes the discussion about the investigation too. And that's what this lesson's all about, isn't it? It's about yep. getting the kids talking about maths. But how will Kylie get on in the classroom? So you're going to do an investigation today and hopefully at the end of it you're going to have all the evidence to say um, what you found out and you'll be able to show us on, on a presentation at the end of the lesson. Kylie then shows the children how to use the interactive teaching programme. You're going to put all the diagonals in, OK? And to do that, you will hold it down and drag it across to where it needs to be. I'm going to be asking, how many diagonals has my pentagon got? Amon Pree? Five. Five, good girl. Now, what we're going to be investigating today, if we go back She's got to crib our sheets available as a backup. We're going to be looking at today. That's hard. I can't find it anymore. Yeah. 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 X. And then we need to go to the diagonals. So there to there. Right. No, another one. 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 Two, three, four, five, six, six. 
could have one more from here. Oh, look. There. To left. Good. Well done. Some of the class go on to apply their hypothesis to other shapes. They all save their work and, at the end of the lesson, groups present their findings on the whiteboard. OK, so this is your first slide. OK, of your PowerPoint presentation. And if you use this pen to click on the board, it goes on to the next one. What, what can you see on this first one? Can you explain what you did? Well, um, at first, we got a regular pentagon and did all the diagonals. And how many were there, Chloe? There were six. There were five. how many? Five. There were five. OK, so that fits in, doesn't it, with our yep. idea that all pentagons have five. Let's have a look at your next one. We decorated some of the you lines. decorated some of the lines, okay. Now, how many diagonals do you have on here? We've got one, two, three, four, four. Oh, but I can see where the one's missing. <laughs> Who can come up and show me where there's one diagonal missing? Oh, oh. Ben. Where one do you think away. one's missing? Uh, there. To, to there. There to there, that's right, yeah. okay, good. Well done, let's give them a little clap. We've investigated about shape and we've collected evidence to prove our results. Was I right that all pentagons, just pentagons, have five diagonals? Tony? Yes. Yes, good. Can you give me a thumbs up if you think you really understood today's lesson? OK, good. Well done. The ICT stopped this becoming a drawing activity. It allowed the children to get on and really test the hypothesis. And some of those pentagons that the children created using the ITP were quite complex. I was um, really pleased with the way that there was evidence at the end of the lesson. I really liked using PowerPoint because at the end of the lesson, it was really good to pull the children's work up and show it on the whiteboard. And I think knowing that that was an option at the end of the lesson gave the children a real motivation to work hard. The resources from the Primary National Strategy, including the interactive teaching programmes and the Excel spreadsheets from the National Whiteboard Network, are free for teachers to use. They're available via the website and also they're directly linked to the Primary National Strategy objectives. You can find out more about the free interactive teaching programmes or anything else you've seen in the programme by visiting the Teachers TV website. And now for some more top tips. <laughs> I find it useful, before I teach, to open up all the files that I'm going to use on the interactive whiteboard or on the computer and just keep them minimised and ready for use. If you're trying to demonstrate a piece of software in the classroom, uh, try right-clicking because invariably if you're looking for an option that you can't find maybe at the top of the screen on one of the menus, if you right-click on the screen you will find uh, a menu or options for something that you could be looking for. People have trouble remembering the exact addresses of websites, I found it more helpful to tell them how I search for something and give the name of the website so they can search again. And finally today, how can ICT be used to inspire reception age children? We visited a teacher in Wembley who's using a specialist piece of software with her children and here's how she does it. The lesson I'm going to teach today is going to be a literacy lesson for reception four to five year olds and it's going to be about retelling a familiar story. Let's have a look first. When we had book week I have made loads of different books and I used shapes and you know everything I could think of and it was still a bit boring so I thought if I make it a bit interesting and use ICT because they can they can see it it's visual it's bold there's sound effects and it can move and they do it and they feel wow that's a book we made and everybody can see it and it's just really exciting to begin the lesson Christelle uses a whole class demonstration of the software big ears let's make his ears green big floppy ears what do you think of that monster? Does he have a mouth? Where's more? Sharp teeth. Let's make sharp teeth for him. Ooh, that looks scary, doesn't it? Then there's lots of different arrows. Can you see? And that shows us how the picture can move. How do we want our picture to move? Simon. Wobbly. Wobbly? Do you think there's something, this one we showed earlier, like this? Okay, and we can also do something else. So who can tell me what this little speaker icon does, Hannah? Make sound. Well done. It makes different sounds. How do we want our monster 
to sound. Like scary. Like scary. We're going to make it sound spooky. Okay, did you hear it sound spooky? Yeah. So then we can type by using the keyboard. We can type our sentence. Now put your hand up if you can spell the word my. Joshua. M Y. So M Y with Y. Now, what do we need to remember? My, now we're going to write a new word. Well done, Tia. Where's the space? The space bar, that's right. Now, what we're going to do now is I'm going to choose some children to come and help me make a book about what our monster can do. So, the first thing we're going to do is... For some of the children, this is their first taste of ICT. And so Christelle works with them in pairs until they're familiar with the software. We're going to be using the software called To Create a Story to create and illustrate their own version of the story I've read. And the rest of the children are just going to be painting monsters, doing some writing about what they can do, and then just playing around with different things in the classroom. What's that? The body. There are a number of different software packages to help you do this. Details on the website. Oh, that looks scary. Hannah, can you start typing the title? The M -m -m -m. Now you think, while she's busy, you have to think of what... It is possible for children to record their own voices, but Christelle has decided to focus initially on writing sentences to tell the story. Nathan and Hannah then get to experiment by adding different movements and sound effects to their drawings. The children take it in turns to draw a monster and write a description of what it can do. No. The monster can fly. Nathan, let's switch again. What can your monster do? How do you write run? Okay, go on. Well done. The plenary brings the whole class back to the interactive whiteboard to share Hannah and Nathan's finished moving picture book. <laughs> the Monsters Party by Nathan and Hannah. <laughs> What does this say? The monster can fly. And this will give Hannah and Nathan a big clap for making their book. Well done. If I use to create a story, it brings some excitement and change into a lesson rather than having the boring paper books and letting them drawing and writing because sometimes they say, Miss, I can't do this. And when they have the computer, they're all so excited and there's, there's sounds and um, different ways of moving the pictures about and they can record their own voices on it and it just makes it their own work and they, they love doing that. Well, that's about it for this programme, but before we go, here's a top tip from me. Don't forget to use the blind feature on your interactive whiteboard to help focus the children's attention. And you can find out information about anything you've seen on this programme, or indeed the series, by visiting the Teachers TV website. And I'll see you next time. Essential Education Projectors from Hitachi sponsor ICT programs.